Good morning, I'm David, and um, just like most of you here today, I'm pretty young, um, 24 this year, which is why I'm uh, very interested in the topic of dreams. Um, it's something that I've been thinking about uh, ever since I ended a recent project called Ethics for the Starving Designer. Um, it was essentially a project on design ethics, um, covered stuff such as whether or not it's right to advertise for secret companies, and so on. Um, and as with anything to do with ethics, um, you start to notice that people have very different opinions on what they think is right and wrong. Um, but the one thing that I did notice, though, was that um, people, what, the one thing that people could agree on was that to be good at what you do, you have to know why you're doing, why you're doing it in the first place. And I think that that applies pretty much outside of design as well, you know. In whatever profession you're in, you have to know what you're trying to achieve. I think everyone knows that. I think it's common sense. But I believe that the challenge that most young people face today is with finding a direction that feels right, you know. A dream that feels personal and meaningful. See, I believe that finding a direction in life is really what define some of our actions and desires. It's why we enjoy and immerse ourselves in stories. It's why we uh, seek religion. It's why we find people to look up to. So, um, today I'll talk about dreams. And I believe that the best way to talk about dreams is, well, to just discuss them. Um, I believe that hearing other people, other people talk about, about their dreams is a fine way of um, allowing ourselves to think about what they say and to go on to define our own dreams as well. Um, so I'm going to start out by talking about what my dream is. All right, here goes. Um, my dream is to create a storytelling universe from which I can explore all sorts of mediums from. Think comics, novels, video games, movies, animated series, and so on. Um, These mediums will become windows uh, from which people can experience the stories that, take pla that takes place in a collective universe. Um, it's sort of like what Star Wars has done. Um, you know, they have a couple of movies and then they become so much more now. But instead of, about, instead of being about the Force, Jedi and Sith, I want my storytelling universe to be about exploring heroism. Because I believe that stories nowadays do not really explore the concept of uh, true heroism. See, we live in an age where tortured protagonists and anti-heroes are celebrated. Stories nowadays are always about some um, complex conspiracy, um, childhood tragedy, uh, love triangles, or you know, if any of you are into current dramas, they are mostly all about vengeance. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, the, all, all, the stories nowadays hardly explore the idea of a hero that, well, becomes a hero simply because he chooses to do what is right, simply because he sees that there is a wrong to right and he goes out and do it, you know, normal, everyday guy. Um, I know it sounds a bit abstract, so I'm going to give you guys an example. I'm going to talk about my inspiration. Uh, it's a video game uh, that I played when I was very young, and to this day, I love it, and it's serve as an inspiration to who I am today. Uh, it's a game called Chrono Trigger. Have any of you guys heard of it? No? All right. Um, it's a brilliant game, a uh, very simple uh, game. It's a role-playing game. And the story is basically about, about a boy who, well, discovers that the world ends a thousand years in the future. And the rest of the story is about him going, um, finding out why the world ends and finding a way to stop it from ending. And that's it. It's a simple story, but I love it. I love it because it explores a simple concept of a normal, of a normal guy becoming a hero simply because he, cho he chooses to do the right thing, simply because he sees that there is something that he can fix and he, and he goes out to do it. You know? um, 
And the beauty about Chrono Trigger is that um, time travel is used very beautifully in the story. Because when you think about it, the boy discovers that the world ends a thousand years in the future. And yet he chooses to do something about it. You know? He could have just lived out his life without ever experiencing the apocalypse. Yet, because he was the only one who knew that the apocalypse would happen, he chose to make it his goal to stop it. And to be honest, when I first played a video game, I was wild. Um, I first played it when I was, when I was in primary school. Uh, I'll never forget the way I first felt when I played the game. Um, to this day, I, I, whenever I have the time, I still go back to the game and I, and I play it, and I find that I'm still learning new lessons. Uh, and for me, that's when you know when a story is good, you know, it just keeps giving. Um, ultimately, I believe that Chrono Trigger has been an inspiration to the person that I am today and what I've done today. It's the reason why I went into design and uh, began a project on design ethics. And today is the reason why I'm making it my life goal to want to create a storytelling universe that explores heroism. Because ultimately, the one, my goal, what I want to achieve, is to make children feel the same way that I did when I first played Chrono Trigger, to inspire that awesomeness within them that I experienced. So, when I think about it, um, it's quite a poetic and meaningful way at arriving at a dream, you know? Um, I started out life experiencing this awesome video game called Chrono Trigger, and here I am, making it my life goal to want to perpetuate that same experience with the children of future. It feels meaningful, it feels personal, it feels like I'm coming full circle. Um, and another benefit for me at having arrived at the dream through this method is that I've realized that I've become more focused on the essence of the dreams rather than the details. You know? um, I'm more focused on what I want to achieve rather than how I'm going to achieve it. Because, well, the most important thing about dreams is that you focus on what you want to achieve, not how you want to achieve it. Well, um, for example, let's be realistic. If it turns out that I'm a bad writer, if it turns out that I can't pull off a storytelling universe, that's fine, because ultimately what I want to achieve is to perpetuate that experience that I fe felt uh, when I played Chrono Trigger into children in the future. And if a storytelling universe is not the answer, that's fine, I'll just find something else, you know. That's what dreams are really all about, lah. Um, achieving something, not a profession, not, uh, yeah. So um, I'm going to give you guys another example of what I mean. Um, you know how children, some children, they want to be policemen or firemen because what really attracts them to the idea of, uh, what really attracts them to those professions is the idea of saving lives. So, you know, when time passes and they grow up, they may end up being something different. You know, they might end up being doctors, vets, or even psychiatrists. And um, while they didn't really achieve their um, goal of wanting to be firemen or policemen, when you think about it, they are still achieving their dreams because for them, it's all about saving lives. The how doesn't really matter that much when you're achieving what you want to do. All right, um, so uh, I've more or less come to the uh, end of my story. Um, I'm happy to say that right now I'm uh, busy writing. I'm sp I spend a couple of hours a day writing. I'm hoping to produce my own uh, independent video game very soon. Uh, it's quite challenging to learn the ropes of it, but it's very rewarding. Um, professionally, I'm a freelance designer. Uh, I do not have a full-time job, but that's a choice that I've made because, well, sometimes when it comes to dreams, they um, they require sacrifices, and for me, I saw that a, ne a necessary sacrifice that I had to make uh, this time around was stability. Lah. All right, so um, that's about it. Thank you so much for listening to my story. Uh, I hardly get the chance of uh, gushing about a video game in front of like 200, 300 people. It's quite an experience. <laughs> All right, so um, if you guys want to talk to me more, I'll be available during lunch break. Thank you so much for listening.